Hello, everybody! And welcome to tonight's episode of A Tale of Two Lions. Hi, how y'all doing? We're all here, gang's all here. And we got a nice, pretty new little layout going on. Think it'll look a little better, look a little nicer. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I'm a mod and I did terrible things. All right, thank y'all for coming out to the episode. It's been a wonderful night. Good night! <laughs> Okay, Josh is gone, so finally we don't have our token Caucasian. Right. Uh, Sin just dropped my OnlyFans link in the chat. OnlyFans.com oh slash the real game dad, which I appreciate the real in there. <laughs> we can, we gotta go for the you an OnlyFans link. No. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> oh my god. We're getting second level with this now. Gosh, I don't know what's happening. I don't either at this point, TBH. Other than half of us are in pink. Actually, yep. two thirds sure. of us are in pink. It sucks. It's not a and Wednesday. And then they're just me and DK. I could be in pink. I could make this happen. Peer pressure, peer pressure. I didn't say I was no. gonna. So anyways, <laughs> <coughs> folks, as per usual. I could. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Folks, as usual, we're going to do that thing where we're like, hey, let's go ahead and shout out our sponsors because, you know, they are the reason we're able to be here and be putting this show on for all of you. And we're very thankful and they're awesome. First one is Valorous Games and the Valor System, which is what we run our campaign on. If you hit exclamation point Valor in chat, you will see a link to the Twitter of Valorous Games as well as to their direct website. They just recently funded uh, their 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 kickstarter for a reprint of the main rule book which is awesome you can still i believe they allow you to get in on that late but regardless um they got some awesome stuff going on what was that uh just me saying ow without forgetting i wasn't muted because my surgery i so thought I you said no and so that's why i was like no. damn it did i screw up ow. i was wrong no ow. listen ow. i apologize it's sorry the, i should have been no. muted do you think um, but yeah, go ahead and click there. You can find out everything you need to about the game. It's wonderful. It's fun. It's a free form system. It's nice and crunchy. Got some good stuff. Also allows for a lot of good RP and we've been having a good time with it. Our other sponsor, if you hit exclamation point adventure in chat, you will see that pop up and that will give you a link to adventuring kit, which is the virtual tabletop we use to run the game. All of us used to run the game. <laughs> it's got everything you need. It's a very fast, efficient, smooth system. It, it, there's almost no lag ever. The Everything makes a lot of sense. Uh, reasonably speaking, to be honest, it's just one of the cleanest, smoothest virtual tabletops I've ever worked with. Uh, it's absolutely a free account to use, which is awesome in order to just get in on all the base features. If you want all the cool bells and whistles and fun stuff, and you want a campaign with more than five people, you can sign up for a premium account. If you do, use code GAMEDAD, all caps, and you get 25% off, and you are able to use that code over and over again on a month to month basis. So just save yourself money and do that. Um, and then one last thing, cause we went away for it for a bit of using our third quote, sponsor slot to shout out something that we need to that i think is important that i think matters uh, a cause that is important to all of us so if y'all could do me a favor and go into chat and hit exclamation point dk one of our own could use some assistance right now and unless we all succeed none of us succeed so i need y'all to get in on that Go ahead and boost it however you can. Go ahead and give if you can. Just go, wait, that's the wrong link. I'm going to fix that in the background while people talk. Right. Um, what would you like us to talk about? Uh, I'm going to hand it off. Put, right. oh, how to properly put a link in the chat there. I Ooh. forgot how that to, like, I did not things. update that. I put it on a list of things to update. The and then I never did it. I never so did strong. it. I never did it. So uh, I'm going to hand off. Hey, Wally, who are you? Then? I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know how I have kids. Well, I don't that, know how I'm here. True. I don't know how I have a community. I don't know how At I'm running this honest. game. At least you're honest. There's a lot you have a I don't know. This is my second channel. That's a good point. <laughs> and I'm very I gave thankful it to you for out it. of love. 
folks y'all I love understand how josh is fully josh is fully the reason that i started actually streaming and yet his channel is my second channel. no y'all understand the reason that joke really really works is because there was a period and i don't think it's that way anymore but i haven't looked to check because it would sadden me but if you typed in at anorient of the first six results only one was me and it wasn't even the first one it was like the third one all the rest were her on image search i should clarify so it's you now it is finally and nessa i mean i'm not opposed i just didn't expect it just um, one photo nessa right. but as i'm fixing this wally go ahead and let everyone know where they can find you Oh boy, sup y'all, it's me, Wally, your, number, your favorite non-binary slime best friend on the internet, and I am better than you. Um, you can find me on Twitter at W-A-L-L-E-132, just like the cute little Disney robot where I'm always talking about the cool stuff that I'm in. Tonight, you can find me playing me some Virgil Wormtooth, your favorite monk dragoon who is also better than you. I'm gonna pass it off to Lexi. Hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. You can find me on Twitter under that same exact name. But today I am playing Fallon Invictus, our resident uh, tinkerer, uh, sad girl, strong girl, all of the things. Um, who am I passing it off to? I'm not looking at the overlay. Whoever's next uh, to me. Anyway. You can go to Sin. Sin, you're next. Sin, it's you. Hi, it's me. Um, Sin, side of farmer person extraordinaire. Um, also, um, joining you this evening is Zeros, who is our very observant, hmm, this looks interesting, I guess we'll just see what happens, um, Rune Knight. That's actually fairly accurate. DK, what's going down? I'm DK and I'm crying in the club and I'm just happy to be thought of, so thank you. Uh, tonight I will be Salacia Farsiris and we're going to my house. And... and that leaves last but certainly not least josh interrupting a black person what were you saying dk <laughs> josh i was gonna let it go i promise i was i was gonna let you have that one uh persephone don't it's tall and nice enough hi i'm persephone aka persephoroth i enjoy torturing my best friend in nor um and i am playing feldspar who would never wear a top like this and would never say things like pussy, cunt, or whore. Was last week quieter? I can't remember if last week was actually quieter. Wow. No, wow. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm not even saying that as shade. I'm literally we'll trying to is, think. Because I wanted to be like, week, last week I mean, was honestly, quieter. Honestly, and then I thought, last week and I was, was like, quieter, but yeah. we didn't have an episode last week, so. <laughs> oh. True, so it was pitch silent. Oop. Yep. I can leave. Oop. I can, I can, I can, I can go. Oop. Like, I can make that happen. Oop. Bitch. <laughs> yeah, Seppi, I need you to stay. For my you know heart. what? Hold I on for a Seppi moment. I have a, I I have need a moment for this. For I need okay, I'll bar. stay for the culture. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nor. <laughs> Fucking... Do y'all know a Norse reports Blue Lives Matter? That's why his headphones oh are blue. Oh my fucking oh my god! god. <laughs> y'all. I don't know why you're laughing, it's true. Oh my goodness. It's not, though! It is. Oh my gosh. <sighs> On our last episode, Feldspar died. Let me just go ahead and boot Sefi out of this. No, she oh, didn't. Wow. No, she wow. didn't. Wow. 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 You heard it here, wow. folks. Wow. Josh here hates black women. Wow. Oh. Black trans women specifically. There it Damn. is. Go ahead and add that in. Make sure. Black, queer, really, trans really, women. Really dig Who it are in. recovering from surgery. There we go. And are on this channel three weeks after getting sliced open Ooh. multiple ways just to support her best friend that part being off the channel that part is actually true which is the real problem like that part is actually i am real. so kind and loving and you are a hateful hateful dick 
I don't know what we're doing anymore. How do you manage to be such a dick when it's probably so small? Wow. And on that note, is there an enemy in Final Fantasy called an inchworm? I don't think so. Thank you, Wally. I appreciate it because that was kind of that was kind of just a stare down of who's going to break the ice on this one. All right. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Actually, I do know. Exactly we call it the cactuar because it's teeny tiny. Anyway, let's play. <laughs> In Japan, it's called Sabo Master, but that's another thing. Or Sabo Tender. I'm hungry. One chicken tendies. No. Wait, I labeled this wrong. How that's dare fine. you tell me I can't have chicken tendies? Are you calling me fat now, Nor? I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. We can play. So, for real, let's go ahead and... I don't even know. Oh, actually, I do know. <coughs> Here we go. So, in the last episode, our heroes, trying to escape from the cavern they found themselves in, underneath Gaug, the city of machinery, where they had located a holy stone, the cavern had begun caving in, and they ran to the one pillared room where they found the teleporter in the first place, and through the help of Construct 5, realized they could in fact teleport away. And our heroes were sent through the life stream itself, with the goal of reaching the Order of Ophidius, the home of Celestia. As they were sent through the life stream, because of the amount of energy that was wrapped around Feldspar with the holy stone she was carrying, she was rocketed ahead from the rest of the group. And the rest of the group had to face various past moments in their life. By and large, however, whether they were good, whether they were bad, the team came together through it all until eventually connecting back with Feldspar. Before they arrived, as stated, Feldspar launched ahead, which gave her some time separate in this place. And as I described it last time, in this world, there was less corporeal figures of themselves. They were almost like beams of light moving through the space. Very little self-control, unless they were looking at a memory or an image or something along those lines. And where Feldspar ended up, where the others would approach what seemed like galaxies of light that would come into focus and turn into these moments from their past, something both similar and different happened to Feldspar. Where she arrived, there was a large sort of galaxy of light, and she came close to it. And as she did, images started becoming clear. But it wasn't images of her past, like everyone else. She didn't see images of her youth, of her upbringing, bad moments, good moments. She saw almost a kaleidoscope of images, just rapid fire blazing through so quickly, one, the other, one, the other, one, the other, it's almost hard to parse them all out. An entire forest set ablaze. A peaceful lake with no interaction whatsoever. A town with all the buildings crumbling as the sky rains with stones downward. An idyllic city street, children playing. Dragons coursing through the sky blasting elemental energies below them and raising the very ground without any sort of control or rhyme or reason. And over time, Feldspar, you realize these images you're looking at are realities. Whether they're your current reality 
or another reality. Whether they reflect now, the past, or the future, every spot you see is Ivalis. You you have enough knowledge to know these these are all places in Ivalis, and these images are all real. But you're not sure what specifically is real now. And then, as you're trying to parse all this out, you're, these images just keeps flooding, 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 and you're by yourself. You don't have anyone to speak to, to rebound these thoughts off of, to have this all going. But as I said, you came here with a holy stone. And that is when, out of nowhere, you start hearing a voice speaking deep in the recesses of your mind. Let me say it clearly. He says, Kine is the name. Kine is the name that you hear. I do seek knowledge. What is it you wish for? I hold the stone. Is it? Does it look like it's reacting to anything around it? So in this case, as I said, you're in the live stream. You don't. Your things are working weirdly. Um, visually, you're just like a blob of light, but the stone is still in your presence, and it's weird. You can sort of interact and move a little bit in this space. So with the stone being in your presence. At this moment, you could try and grab it, manipulate it, move it, something along those lines, but it's kind of just floating within your space at the moment. I want to know what these stones are. What do they do? That depends. In the hands of the righteous, they can save worlds. And in the hands of the damned, they can be cast on this. Your heart determines the stones. What is your The human's heart is more than just righteousness and damnation. How can I be sure I'm either? How are you sure? Do you know? 
And when this happens, you see the stone begin floating out of your space in the air before you, and it forms a sort of field of energy that surrounds you. And the images now get incredibly clear with like, like, like as if you're there in the moment experiencing them. And you see a few things, but you see the primordial basis of the world and these stones forming under the light of the stars. And you see images of power and energy emanating from them. And then you see a focus on the stone of Aquarius, the stone you hold. And you see power emanate out from it in both directions. And on the one hand, you see it's a literally blinding light. It is just, you cannot make out full details of everything. You know there is light and power and something there, but you can't draw your eyes to it. And on the other side, the power instead darkens. And then it turns blue, and then it takes form and it turns like into a torrent of water and begins forming from the ground two large, powerful, incredibly thick standing base pillars like legs into a thick, large, just absolutely barrel chested body. One long arm coming from the left ending in a hand, the other arm ending in the right, ending in a few giant prongs which wrap around an enormous gilded pot. And the whole thing forming up to the top and forming what on a normal being would be a head, but it kind of just ends in a vague amorphous shape coming to a point with no features of any note. Do I recognize this image from any books? Go ahead and give me an intuition roll. Chucky. That, I rolled the wrong one. Oh. That's not great. Um, intuition is, that's an eight. Okay, so I mean- Although I do have, um, I do have research challenge technique, if that helps. So you get a chance, you can roll again and, and you get to try, basically you get a second shot out of it because of the nature of what I'm asking. 16! Much better. So you think back and you remember the books where you learned about the basics of uh, the Zodiac stones and the, the tale of the Zodiac Braves. Um, mm. And in general, they've always regarded that the 12 heroes who held those Zodiac stones had different powers. And one of the ideas that was posited was that uh, the stones gave them the power to like amplify their bodies. And there were various depictions of what that may look like. And you know the Aquarius stone vaguely was supposed to look like some sort of like giant water armor. This that's in front of you does not match what the books told you for the Zodiac Braves. It rather, this seems like, this seems literally, I mean, obviously it's literally monstrous, but it does line up with the idea presented of something water-based empowering whatever was holding it. As you're positing all this, again, you hear a voice in the back of your head and you can tell it's coming from this watery thing before you. Sorry, 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 sorry. 
You're what, what we're fighting wants. I could... Just a clarifying question. Is the thing that's talking to me definitely the thing on the left? Or is it a conglomeration of just the stone's power? No, no, no. You can tell right now, like I said, the two images split off. You can tell you're being spoken to. Like, Famfrit is this torrent water being thingy the the light has as far as you can tell not only can you not make anything out it isn't speaking it's not addressing you now i'm trying to decide um i'll put it there obviously you could tell there were multiple voices whether the first voice you heard was the conglomeration of both or just that one side you would not know because like i said that side is not interacting with you as yet i'll just figure out clarify that out i want to do something weird i exist in this place of light and dark i want to reach into my soul and I want to pull forth the creatures that I summon and potentially any creatures I could potentially summon in this place of ultimate potential. Sensational. All right. Um, give me a... Give me a resolve roll. This is just straight up you willing this shit because you don't know what you're doing. Okay. Um, I also have challenge technique summon. <laughs> Does that help me? <coughs> I will let you roll a second time if you like. Thank God. Okay. Yes! Literally the opposite roll! That's a 15, the highest Beautiful. I can roll. All right. Wait, do I get any other bonuses? Hold on. I think I might. Um... I do not. Okay. Cool. So, in this light, you see it almost like sink into itself, and in the center of it, you see a red, a blue orb first form, and float to the side of Feldspar and then a red orb form and float to the side of Feldspar floating next to her in space essentially the sources of Shiva and Ifrit within her and all of this floats in this space and you see it's still receded and suddenly a yellow orb starts forming in this space and floats above her, joining the other two aimlessly. You're not sure fully what you pulled out of yourself just now as yet, but you know you found some a connection to something else in there. And then the voice speaks to you again. This is an attempt to impress me with your 
No, nothing like that. These creatures are connected to me through my heart and in my soul. We share that space. Only they could tell me what path my heart would take if I accepted this power. And so I asked them, Shiva, Ifrit, Rama, what form would my power take if I accept this stone? Who would I become? And what? You see the three orbs come together. They interact with each other immediately and begin floating around one another. You, it's hard because you don't see the creatures, the things you've brought forth that you come to know. This is just forms of energy, but all the same, you have a connection with them. So you feel the raw emotion like you were there. And you suddenly, you get the feeling like they all know each other and get along with each other. Mm -hmm. After all, they've all been inside you this whole time. And as they all spin around a bit, suddenly they come together and sink back inside you. And you don't hear a word in the traditional sense or words. They're, they're not speaking to you, but you get the strong feeling. Don't. But it's, it's nuanced. It's almost like you get the feeling like you're being told, not now, not like this, not what is being presented. Save yourself. And as you get that feeling, suddenly the vision before you begins to flicker and you hear the voice one last time. My, My power is and with that, the whole thing fades out of view. And suddenly an image fades into view. And you see three silhouetted figures. And they're hard to make out, like you're not sure what it is, but slowly they come into view. And as you're staring, you realize the figures you're staring at are Gofford Gafgarian and Anatolos speaking to one another in a room with another figure facing away from you. And at this time is when your allies float into space alongside you. And now all of you are united and together again. And while they were informed of what I'm about to say last week, we're going to restate with the group together that the voice that speaks as the third body, as it turns, the imposing figure with the silver armor and the long hair speaking to these two men as they plan whatever it is they're planning is Melchior Tengil. You see the group speaking and Melchior saying, all will go according to plan, so long as you don't screw anything up. I have set everything in motion. And it's at that point that the group is pulled away, is rocketed once th more through and comes to the other side of the live stream and gets blasted into 
the life space of the real world in a forest clearing somewhere, forming a, a five-pointed star as far as your exact placements with one another. And in the middle of you all, on the ground, sits the Stone of Aquarius. I immediately go to the stone and pick it up. It's not speaking anymore. It's... Fallon. Um, yes? Where's the containment unit for this? Or the um, one that we had before? The one that's different? It's right, I, I believe I should have it. Can you change it so that it'll fit this? Can you make a new hollow? Are we carrying it with us? Yes, you would have it on you. Like, all the things you were carrying on you before, you're still carrying on cool. you. So you can assume that you, like, had that hanging from your back or something. I will go ahead and just try to outfit it for what we're doing right now. We don't have the Stone of Leo, but we have this one, and it needs to be in there. Okay. When you uh, open it up, and you, you, know, you, you open up the outside of the unit, get it open, because you've managed it before, so it's obviously you can get it again. You see the hollow that's specifically supposed to be made for the Leo Stone, um, and you get out one of your tools to where you can start maybe like carving, trying to see if maybe you can adjust it slightly, see if you can hollow it out just a bit more so that that stone can fit in there. You know, the idea being, even if it's not perfect, like once you snap this thing together, the ultimately the magic is on the outside of it that's gonna keep everything inside contained. So should be fine. Uh, the moment you go to try and, you know, manipulate it, like scrape out, do whatever to where you can try and expand the size a little bit, your hand is immediately repelled back. You can tell, like, there's something magical going on here. These things were made with a specific purpose, and you're not going to get the you're you're not going to bespoke this one. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to work like that. It's probably a foolish idea to do it anyway. This stone is more dangerous than we knew, and In it was pretty way? damn dangerous. I, I mean, we we were pretty much convinced it was bad but why is it even more bad it offers temptation and if your heart is one way or the other it can either be a great boon or great evil it's whatever we just were offered to me i will not say that i was not tempted so it wants to be used desperately as most forms of power do I don't know if it's just a form of power. I think it's a being in of its own. What contains multitudes. It can be used to great good or great ill. Nothing in between. What? When you say evil, do you know the extent of the evil it was trying to have you wield it? You felt the power from even the remnant of one of these stones, remember? Yeah. It can be as good or as bad as intensely in either direction, depending on the heart of the person who takes it. I didn't. Do you think you're safe from here on out? From ch having to choose? I didn't refuse, I just didn't answer. All I know is that if I am to be the one to accept this, it's not the right time. So you're saying is, you think you're gonna have to accept it eventually? Not necessarily. But I think that this stone will eventually choose to be used. In which direction it goes? I don't think it's that picky. Hmm. At least That's one of the option. creatures within it isn't. I'm sorry? 
I'm sorry, I was thinking out loud. It just maybe you're the best option then. Not according to Shiva, if written. Rama, at least not right now. Maybe not now, but if it's going to choose to be used eventually, and you have the magical fortitude to wield it, my people are trained in harnessing big magic without being consumed by it. So it's not, that's all. I think it's less knowledge and fortitude and more if my soul can withstand it. Good news is that's not an answer we have to have right now. No. But this stone, regardless, has a will inside of it, maybe more than one. There were two paths, only one spoke to me, and you can guess which one it was. I'm supposing the more interesting of the two. Potentially. I don't know. Either way, the story of the Braves has got to be far more complicated than the church would let us believe. Um, well, I suppose we do have one other thing to discuss while we're here before we go into the village. Oh, there's a village. Where the fuck are we? Wow. Did I just swear? <gasps> did you just swear? You did. Oh no, I can't handle the stone. I'm totally evil. I just look at Salacia with a smile. <gasps> I hold my hand out for Feldspar. It's okay. We'll support you in this time. I know this, this is so, so hard. This is the greatest day ever. Oh man. Oh, it's the worst day ever. I didn't even think about that one. Oh man, I, you I, almost I, accepted great evil. I think this is a perfect trade-off. What can be more evil than swearing? You just met them. You you know what can be more oh, evil than swearing. Oh, that's just a big water no. jug carrying demon. This is and inside me now. Unfortunately, <gasps> no cure. Hmm. Yeah. The lance is in danger. Yeah. I mean, I would dare to say Limberry for us is possibly not safe. No. And Melchior is a hero. Hmm. It's going to be really hard to turn the public opinion against him. Mm hmm. At the very least, if we do have people to find there, we may have a means that we can use. But we'll have to think about that later. Uh, I'm sorry to ask, but I'm still stuck on this evil boon thing. This isn't an maybe I'm just wishful thinking here. This isn't something that we can possibly use towards helping people see that he's bad? The moment someone touches a stone, there's a chance that they can text up the deal. Hmm. If there's a way to show what's within the stone without activating it completely, then yes, but that I do not know. And honestly, for even to have a chance to challenge Melchior, we need the support of nobles who are stronger than them. That's how even this works. We won't be able to get close to him without it, even being part of one of his units. And I guarantee that he knows we've been looking into this because he's been talking to that bastard, both of them. However, I do not believe that they know that we know of Melchior, and that right now is to our advantage. Josh, I'm a noble. Yep. Do I know of anyone powerful 
who doesn't like Melchior or his family. This, what is Salacia's family? Mom, I feel like we're right here too. So I feel like that'd be a good resource. Oh, Felds might have missed that part of our journey. What? Salacia's a, is a princess. Noble. It, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She's a <sighs> whole ass princess i mean we they, weren't gonna say it they but... are literally <laughs> royalty uh here actually I, I, we are i right gesture there. at this area behind like, just, why is just... here what if there's just uh, a huge castle behind us <laughs> what's no <laughs> welcome home salatia <laughs> <laughs> on a map uh the closest marker would be uh melvesca Is that inside Evilus or is it in yes, Ordalia territory? all of you. No, no, no. It's very northeast. It's about as both north and east as you can get without getting into Ordalia. Very cold, harsh up there. Um, there's, is this a country I've heard of? Yes, you would have. It's like, so it's north of what would be currently considered um, Jargonist territory. So, um... Basically, uh, north, way north of Limberry, like okay. almost dead north of Limberry. But it's but a it known would be country. North. It's not a secret country. Yes, it's something that. Uh, okay, this group would not necessarily be known by everyone. Nelveska, in other words, you would know. You would know that area. It would be like knowing the exact. Uh, the best way I can say it, it would be like knowing the existence of Wyoming. Whether or not you're going to go there, you probably know the place exists. You're the princess of Novesca. I'm one of them. It's a very small country. But it's a country. It's a country! Why don't we head into the kingdom while we discuss the finer points? I'll rock my brain. Josh, did you answer my question? No, I was waiting for all this to play out once there was revelations. I, I decided that was funny. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, you, there is a, the one thing you could potentially draw that you would think would work would be the question of, you're not perfectly sure. The standout thing of Melchior Tangil is he's considered one of the three greatest blades of the land in wartime Along with which matters you're not necessarily sure how the other two blades view him because it is a known quantity how close those two are that they will literally go to battle and then in the middle of the battlefield be like oh it's time for a break and sit down and take tea and people give them wide berth because they're not going to try and fuck with those two so it's orlando sidolphus and- orlando Count Sidolphus Orlando and the knight gallant himself, Barbaneth Beolf, would be the only two people who you would wonder, given they never seemed as close with him, would they be the answer? But you wouldn't know that for sure because you're not super close to them to have asked that. Something to think You'd have about. to investigate it. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're about to meet your mother. Yes. And probably my sisters. I assume they're running around here somewhere. Is there actually a castle nearby? So not a castle. When you, as you all walk, are walking forward through this wooded clearing, you come to the edge of a village. Um, and this village is somewhat quaint. Um, very rural, for sure. But you do see on the far end, it's not a castle, but you see uh, a big stoned, almost like a lightly kept fortress. Basically mm-hmm. a small, like, in stone building. You would assume, based on the size and based on the quaintness of the village, like, this would be likely a situation where, in general, that is where you have your barracks, uh, you have royalty, like, everything kind of gets handled in the main building all at once, and there's but so much that gets handed off to the side, at least from main view. Uh, And as you approach the side, you see two women, like, because it's an actual, like, road that goes into the town, like an actual made, uh, laid down road that you can 
see going in and out of town, you see two woman soldiers standing there in armor with a spear at either side, immediately at the ready as they see you approach. Hold! Who goes there? Is that... Is that the princess? You've returned! And you see them immediately... They immediately lose a little bit of their composure, like just a bit, uh, in like in the fangirling sense. Uh, it's like, oh, she's returned. We can say, oh, um, yes, um, you, you, the queen, you, the queen, mother, mother, queen, the queen is uh, in is 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 in the main building and today. They're... Yes. I think they're fond of you. Got quite I would a hope so. Here. They've both beaten me in a fight several times, so. It would mm, like to very... stay on their good side. This Wait. place is magical. They, these I... people are full of warriors? Yes. As you're strolling through the area, you look around and you see few other armored woman guards. Uh, you see a mother and her daughter uh, walking around. You see the door open of what is very clearly like the local... Uh, bakery, and you see a woman in back cooking, and there's a woman up front who's like intriguing with all the various customers, handing off bread and everything. And it dawns on you, it's a woman in back, a woman handing off with the bakery. There are women in line in this place, and you have not seen a man anywhere. There's no men. There's no men here. None. I. Why are we surprised? Salacia no, I've really told Virgil. us this before appearing. Yes, keep it fresh, Virgil. Did I hear that? I no. Yes. So, Sefi, just to I clue you in, they, this all happened while you all were separated that they found out, so that's why for you, yeah. It's, it's just a, more of a seeing is believing. Like, I believed when you said it. it's just, wow. It's, Are you two even allowed here? You notice that, so you see all the guards looking and all of them kind of have like this sort of pivot pivot confusion kind of situation where like they notice Celestia so they everything's fine then all together all right going to watch not really sure how to approach uh, as far as the regular lay people you see all of them are staring at me and then immediately at Zeros and Virgil. And it's, you're not really able to parse out the looks either, to be honest with you. Like some of them you see looking kind of confused and then moving on with their day. Some of them you see looking kind of interested. Some of them, there's one or two you see looking kind of like, ah, shit. Like, so basically it's like if a bunch of black people walked into a store in the Rust Belt, got it. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Got it, got it. Are they allowed here? Uh, Do you not theory, have- No, but I'm What happens princess. if a boy's born here? Do you just kick him out to the forest? Men are this is not a judgment, by the way. I'm very curious. Men aren't born here. Ah! But they're just not- That's very sexy. Yeah, this is cool. Are this we leaving, cool. Fallon? Are we what? ever leaving? Let's never leave. I don't think we should. I'm not- This I is why know. I can't have the stone. <laughs> Just, just well, so everyone's aware. You know something? You could take the stone and make this into a flying kingdom, and then it would make it out of reach for almost everyone. Goodwill. I do that think is Mama a, would like that. That is Ooh. a good use of the power, but really, like, so I can just fight with anyone here, right? It, no, if, you're. I'm stealing access. You are. I, am, I would like to ice. remind you that you are in competition with me for being the politest person here. This is true, you're on thin oh, ice. Oh, right, that's that's right, yeah. That's right, I'm gonna be polite. Right. You're two All points right. behind. Okay, okay, I will not challenge any of these fantastic warrior women that are around here who could probably kick my... Yeah, Virgil, Virgil I'll tell you what, because I wanna see Virgil, no, Virgil no. Your, your turn is getting more and more suspect. Oh, okay, I... It's been a while since I've I've had a fight. A while with... since you've done what exactly? Had a fight that I think I could Control actually lose. yourself. Oh, you will. No, you most certainly will. Really? I, I want to see this. Actually. Oh. So I'll tell you what. If you win, if you yes. get heroes, uh -huh. I will ask Mama if I can take you to the monastery to our training rooms. 
he gets up in Zero's face, like, Zero's, you best believe this right now. I'm going to be the most upstanding, most polite motherfucker. That young ever lady over stuff. there is waving at you. You need to wave back. Oh. Greetings. Greetings over there. Also, can we subtract another point? He just swore. Elspar would be the expert, Virgil. I'm sorry. I think mm. that I'm also subtracting a point for greetings. It was very cheesy, not nice. Okay, 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 fine. And your <sighs> smile leaves something to be desired. Try I it. Have, I have a great smile. I have a it's... great smile. And when he okay, smiles... Okay, that's not a smile. That's a smack. When he smiles, you see it's like... <laughs> You know when like those hot blooded characters smile just looks like it's battle crazy. No, it, yeah. he does not have a charming smile. He has a smile of someone who's like, you want to fight least, me? Let's he looks fight. like he's going to go on an axe yeah. rampage. Yes. Yeah. He has at least one like He looks one like a character from Black Clover. Got it. Yes. 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 He, like, looks over, it's like a whole thing. He looks over at the young girl who's waving to him. He does this. Hey, how's it going over there? My name is... My name is my name is Virgil Wormtooth, son of Sid Wormtooth. Oh, you're mentioning more. Pleasure men. to make your acquaintance. Zero sets two points for you. Yep. I just like there's just like this like the most subtle nod. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good job, Virgil. Keep practicing. Yeah, thank you. A lot. Practice a lot. Not on people. <laughs> I, I think I may have pulled something doing that. Ugh. Hell, you never heard. So as the group moves forth through town, it is not a quick move forth through town, by the way, mostly because a certain someone keeps derailing them. Mm -hmm. I think Salacia also keeps slipping away from the group because she sees people that she knows and just kind of like runs Absolutely. on over in a manner completely unbefitting of a princess to like clasp right. a hand or but i'm pretty know. sure like this is one of those things where when we see salacia run off i'm like i have like half a second of being like oh i should wait the way that people are looking at me i should probably just stay right here and wait for salacia to do what she's doing and come back yeah and every time the thing you notice is that for the rest of you, you've been around nobles and such enough that you know, like, there's certain levels of decorum you're supposed to keep, and this, that, or the other. Um, and this throws you off, because Salacia's always so composed and, you know, keeps things in check, and it's just such excitement. But you also notice that the townsfolk are not thrown off by this. Uh, there's very much so the sense that Salacia is a part of this place. Like, there is a connection and a bond and, like, everyone just kind of seems to be like, yeah, this is normal. It makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't she be rushing up? We're all excited to see her, too. Like, it just, it all kind of connects in. And as you get to the big main building, you go through the front doors, and you get led through a main hall, or the hall, up to uh, the a further back doorway in. And when it opens up, you see what is the great hall of the place. And at the far end, you see standing some six and a half feet tall, like just an absolute unit of a woman sitting, uh, standing next to a throne where you see her writing on something. You see what the rest of you have seen before and were able to clue in as Salacia's mother, other than Feldspar, who was not there at the moment. But, I mean, woman standing next to a throne, you can draw conclusions. She's looking down, right? Like writing? Yeah, she's writing actively on, uh, like I said, writing on a few pieces of paper that someone is standing there. Like they, they have some and they're like doing a hand back and forth and you see her write and then hand. So she's kind of distracted at the moment. I think if anyone in this, uh, this throne room uh, notices me coming, I just kind of like shush them. and Absolutely. Uh, Salacia does not run. In fact, she straightens up to her full height and sort of steps into that royal carriage and moves at a quick, measured pace, just sort of watching her mother fondly for a minute. And then when she's about halfway to where the throne is, she says, I request an audience with Queen Aloysia. And you see the, the writing stops. And her eyes move up slightly. 
because if there's something you know about mothers, they know the sound of their daughter's voice. And from the side, you see a large smirk appearing. Permission granted. And she hands the paper over and turns, and you see her, much the same, begin approaching towards Celestia and keeping most of her composure until she gets right up near Salacia and stands there for a moment and says, So the princess has returned. Hi, Mama. And I think she just, like, jumps yeah, to close right. the distance. And, so to, and she, like, the hi, mommy is it a hi, baby. And she just catches you straight up and just embraces you immediately. Uh, and as before in your vision, gives you a little kiss on the head. And she, you hear her say to you, I had a dream I got to see you last night. So did I. And um, you feel her holding you for a bit. It's a close embrace. It's, it just feels warm and good. And it's like it lasts longer than it actually is. Like you both kind of just sink it in the moment. And then finally you see her pull her arms back and look at the rest of the group and say, uh, so it seems you've, uh, you've bought some people I wouldn't usually expect to see here. I did make some executive decisions. I'd like you to meet my friends. This is this is Feldspar and Fallon and Xerox. And this here's Virgil. And you notice she says, she kind of, with each one, gives a bit of a, with Feldspar, she gives a bit of a wave. With Fallon, she gives a bit of a wave. And with Xerox and Virgil, she nods her head, but noticeably does not wave the hand forward this time with each of you. And it's just like, it's, it's not disdainful, but there's an acknowledgement without quite the same movement. And um, you see her, hello all, uh, I am Aloysia. I am the queen of this place, the head of the Order of Ophidius. And I'm sure some of you have noticed that you stick out a bit here. Feltzpah's going to go into a deep, formal, uh, evolution curtsy. I think, uh... <laughs> that you do uh, for royalty. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that, uh... Uh, Fallon's... Yeah, Fallon's nobility also kicks in a little bit and immediately goes for the deep bow. Absolutely. Like, Virgil's, is, Virgil's nobility... Fallon's noble too? Virgil's nobility and military so, training kicks in. I don't know anything! He <laughs> takes a knee and kneels down in front of her and even presents his weapon in front of her. Bonus points, Virgil, bonus points. That's okay. Now, this is where I just go, hey, do we, like, as people who are nobles, do we have, like, any special knowledge on customs for this? Are we all noble? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, the only, so one, only one of them is. Yeah. Josh was like, you don't have to be noble. It's probably rare, and every one of us is like, we're, we're all noble. I'm a, I'm a princess, so right. thank you. <laughs> I crafted stuff. Don't give me ch chances. I'll run with it. Okay. But, um, so you see, she acknowledges everyone and says, I appreciate. Oh, uh, Zeros, you were, you were asking. Oh, I was I asking if we do, like, if we do any particular customs for this area in terms of, like, how you greet people. Nothing. Like that. You wouldn't know anything specific to like the Order of Ophidius, because again, it's such a closed group. This is the type of thing that you you wouldn't, you, you would only know if you know. Um, this is an area that's very secluded and they keep it that way for a reason. Um, the girls who know, know, okay. and the men don't. Then in that case- So uh, you just kind of got to go with generic stuff for now. Okay, in that case, I'm going to give the most formal, like, uh, a formal bow, but from um, the region that my parents hail from. Okay. Would I recognize this based on my research in the Order? So the Order of Aphidius, there would have been a lot of teaching and instructing and things like that. Um, hit me with an intuition roll. You got it. 
Don't fuck me, Dice. I want this. <laughs> that is. Well, I mean, you got to see a whole it's bubble with. You got to okay. see me and my parents yeah. in a bubble. I you, feel like you would definitely. You, you are familiar that you saw. Feldspar, Fallon, everything kind of lines up with traditional Ivalisian things. Uh, Virgil with a, a, an Ivalisian warrior's acknowledgement of royalty and things like that. Zeros, you, because of the location of where you are, you are basically, while the main, you are on an island just to the north of like the mainland of Ivalis, large enough that it can contain all of you, but it is an island, so it kind of gets separated, but it's to the north and almost the far eastern border of Ivalis. You've had just as much trade and connection with Ordalia over the years as anything else. You would recognize that that's an Ordalian traditional sort of bow curtsy that you wouldn't see in an Ivalisian courtroom. I think Salacia clears her throat and kind of lays a hand on her mother's arm and like, stands up very straight, and then mirrors the Ordalian gesture. What are they doing? I have no clue. I love this place. <laughs> I, I don't know, but uh, something. And for all of you, you would notice that it's like, it kind of looks right, but it's it just, it's off. You would never see this in an Evolution court with people addressing each other. You just wouldn't. It's, it's not... Uh, the equivalent in today would be like instead like actually genuinely seeing someone unironically bow to say hello in the street like it's not that it's offensive it's it's what are you doing that's weird why are you doing that that's what you're dealing with here. I don't know what you're talking about Josh that is the proper way to greet me right exactly yeah. so uh, you see Aloysia you have collected a a very eclectic little group here. Best people in the whole world. Well, if you say that, then I trust it. Um, are you here for a pleasure visit, or...? As happy as I am to see you, Your Majesty, and as much as I intend to hunt down Dean Cassie, um, things have gotten complicated in our service, and there, I think, are not many places that we can turn to certainly not places um equipped for protection and seclusion we came across something uh, could we maybe go to your chambers for this it's um sensitive when you say came across something, do you mean something or someone? Little of column A, little of column B, but I am more concerned about the something that we found. I think not column A and more column B. And think about mothers, because mothers have an intuition. And she looks at all of you and she goes, I think, and you see her look specifically at Salacia and say, I think it's time that the princess learns of some secrets that you only find out when you are ready. Come with me. And you see her begin walking towards the back of the hall. And you see in the back of the hall, there is a door. Uh, and so you can presume, like, behind there would be, uh, you go through the door. I'm assuming everyone follows. Uh, I'm actually, as I long as we have permission, if we have the yeah. appropriate cue to follow, because, like, she did oh, just say, she did just say, follow me. And when she, okay, Do yes, okay, that's fair. Uh, the implication being for all of you. I think oh, Salacia okay. also turns around and kind of. <laughs> Fair. Oh, yeah. So I now what I'm imagining, she says, follow me, and Salacia begins walking because why the fuck wouldn't you? And the rest of the group is just kind of. And then the wave happens. Right, the wave happens, and you all kind of realize and collect along. Gets up. Um, Stumbles a little. Right. Yeah. And so as she goes through, you see her go through the door, and there's a small hallway that leads to another door and back. 
And when you go through that door, you see a large, very well-made floor poster bed. You can tell this is the queen's quarters, as has been stated. But you see her immediately go to the back. And she stands next to, there is a large fireplace with two large brazier sconces above it uh, that are currently lit. And you see her waiting for everyone to fill into the room. And there is, a, there is a guard, by the way, posted at the door. And she simply nods to the guard who closes the door behind. And you hear, uh, you, and you see her walk forward to the door and click it and slide. And there's like a heavy lock that goes in. And she walks towards the back again and goes up to one of these sconces to grab one of the braziers. And you see her turn it slightly. And the blazing flame that's in the fireplace goes out. And you hear <laughs> as part of the wood begins to the wood, excuse me, the stone on the ground begins to recede. And it creates Is this why I wasn't allowed to play here. A staircase going downwards. And she lifts the brazier and says, That's one of the reasons. There's other things I don't want you finding. And without saying another word on that, you see her begin going down the steps. And as you all travel along with her, going down these steps, you see them go down, turn, come back around, and you're just going down a very well-made but masoned hallway, going down and around, and you go through an opening, and it opens up into a absolutely massive library rivaling the library that you saw in Garland College. You are at the top level and it goes down several floors into the ground. Books and uh, just shelves, uh, glass containers everywhere. Just, just stuff everywhere. And you see her turn and go, it's time for you to learn about the knowledge that's held by the Order of Ophidius. So, what are we dealing with here? Are we allowed to be here? Are we allowed to be here? I don't think I could find what we need to find without you. I have concerns. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and take so a break. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and take a break, folks. Uh, we're gonna take Word. we're gonna take vaguely a uh, six to ten minute break, give or take. Um, so we'll be back shortly. Go ahead, stretch your legs, get yourself something to drink if you need it. Massage your butt cheeks if you're me. Do that. Just just rub that your one butt. Goes out the seppi. for for health and goodness. Rub your butt. Rub your butt for health and goodness. Hashtag... It's like a genie bottle, except. You just cause me less pain instead of like getting wishes. Aww. Uh -huh. that, I mean, that's a good thing. That's, that's like that better than a wish. That's a good thing. It hurts. So, yeah, we're going to go on break. We will be back in a few minutes, folks. See you on the other side. And...
And we are back! What's going on, everybody? Thank you for hanging out. Hope everyone got a chance to stretch, got a chance to get a drink. Do what you gotta do. Rub your butt for good vibes, as we've established. Um, take screenshots of the, the captions I left on. Take screenshots of rub of rubbing your butt. What are you rubbing it on? Yes, Coleslaw, there is. But also, what are you rubbing them on that you can screenshot it? All right, fair enough. Um, that's it. That's it. I get it. I get. Yeah, I, I walked into that one. I don't. What? I don't want to know where this goes. We're going to we're going to keep it moving. We're going to get back to to um actually as far as the giveaway uh for reasons, I'm going to do it towards the end of stream. Um this way it basically gives myself cover of if we don't get to it, I can shift it onto social media. Wait, cast is muted. Cast shouldn't be muted. I can hear him. Did I accidentally mute the wrong element? I did. Ah, it's a good thing we caught that now. So you had captions, but you were muted. Okay, you're good now. I something, think. something, 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 white man muting the black people. There we go. There we go. I he wasn't even in the middle of a bite, so I decided Stuck to step the landing. In and fill it in. 10 out of 10. It's just like a, a jigsaw piece with all the other puzzle pieces. God. Mm. We're in a place. Listen, sometimes I need to try and get a shot back in. I'm not going to succeed, but it's worth trying. You're taking shots at black people? Shots? I was going to say, don't your people shoot us enough? Oh, God. Oh. Josh, you open this, the door every time. I do. I have no goal. one to blame but me. Really I have no one to blame. It's, it's a Sisyphusian tale. Without a warrant, it's these people's MO. It's a Sisyphusian tale. Just rolling that fucking rock up the hill. Anyways, so, as we were, we are now under the Order of Ophidius, this, this place we've come to visit, and we are in just a, just a big old library. And down here, you see, like I said, it, the books go on for God knows how long. Everything is... Just, it's huge. There's and there's so much lighting. Like you have to assume all these wall sconces and braziers and everything are being lit by magical means. Uh, and one thing I can tell you is you can tell this place is old. This place is very old. Whether we're talking hundreds of years or thousands, we are talking well before. Anyone standing here or anyone close to anyone standing here? And you see the queen say, so, what seems to be the issue? Is this, is this the original ritual chamber? Not quite, huh? See, the Order of Ophidi, this was where things were researched. The Order of Ophidius has a lot of knowledge gathered that was given to us before the ritual occurred. And... How, how far back do these records go? How far back does Ivalis go? Oh, if the church knew about this. There's a reason that these stay hidden even to the people of this place and there's a reason this place stays hidden to most of the world we're not hostile to outsiders but we protect what we need to protect how does one apply for citizenship being friends with a princess is usually a pretty fast track on the paperwork Okay, good. We're friends, right? Of course you love we me. 
Do you think I want to go through this library without you? I would never forgive you if you did. Mother, it stands to reason that at least I'm, I'm hoping so. You've heard of the Zodiac Stones. So which one have y'all found? Don't get mad. Aquarius. Now hold up the stone. And technically... We found the containment unit for Leo. You found a containment unit, but didn't find a stone. No. Well, that's not great. Mm -mm. I couldn't think of anywhere safer to bring it. No, you... You did right. There's, um... You know... Is it a bit of a beacon for those who know how to find it? Yes. But there's also some magics here that should keep us safe. But walking around with that is a good bit more dangerous if you don't know what you're contending with. Oh, I have some idea. Unfortunately. It spoke to you, Else. didn't it? <clears throat> don't worry, I didn't accept anything. Which one spoke to you? Not great one. Famfrit. That big Called oceanic kind. You see, she looks very quizzically at you. Hmm? Wait. You, you said not good. But it was kind? Kind, Famfrit, they were the same thing. Oh no, sweetie. I mean, yes, but trust me. Oh no. Not in the they slightest. They use the same voice. If one of them Josh, said, "Did they use the same voice?" Slightly different on the first one, okay. and it was more a. T so here, I'll, I'll I can. Even if it was the same voice, did they? Speak? Speak to you the same. No. And you heard both of them? Mm. You see, she looks at DK at uh, uh, Jesus. See, she looks at Salacia. She looks at DK standing outside the game. Uh, you see, she looks at Salacia and says, I guess you did pick good friends. Come on. I'm very confused. She turns around and starts walking. And you see her walking, and she goes down the steps to the next level, and you all follow, and she goes back, and she comes to an area where there's an opening between two very large sets of shelves, and there, where there would be the space for another shelf based on even placing. There is no shelf there, and there's uh, a large sort of... It's like a table with a big glass case atop it. And you see the table has a large carved in design on it. And as she walks up to it alongside it, if you look, you see the table is written in ancient evolution, like very similar to the dark tome you found before, how it was old, old, and like you can make out based on the rooms, very basic language processes and letters, but it's not written in like modern tongue. Mm -hmm. Kind of the equivalent of if you found true, genuine old English today, it literally doesn't, yeah, you're using the same letters. It doesn't sound anything like what we're saying today. I can read old English, but okay. Yeah, and it's like very actual different. Old English, not middle right, English. but I'm English, saying it's English, very English, different English, compared English, yeah. to even though the letters are the same. And I also, I told I you before the... that you could read the other book, so we're on the same I know. page. Now, um, it's more like real, the though, difference between like high French and like. That's actually a fair point. Um, I was about, I was literally yeah. about to say that since I know you know French, um, yeah. but so you see some very very crude images cut in around the outside. Not crude, like, bad, but crude, like, it's just very... 
very simply done. And as you're looking, Feldspar, you definitely realize what you're reading based on past conversations. Zeros, you look down and realize the words. Uh, and you kind of piece together what is there before it's said. But Queen Aloysia looks and says, and Celestia, you likely would have been taught in your upbringing these older letters and such. Uh, but Virgil and Fallon, you're not out of the loop too far because it clearly would come in quick with Aloysia. Fallon saying, or Fet Feldspar? Uh, fa no, I'm saying fa Feldspar is able to read this. I was saying Fallon and Virgil, you're not staying out of the loop too long because the queen immediately begins kind of explaining. This right here is one of the oldest images of the true nature of the stones. It's a copy of it, but it's accurate. And you can see going around the 12 of the Zodiac, the 12 demons. You see there is Zalera. You see over there, Belias the Gigas. Over here, Kushalain, the impure king. And you see next to all these very, very simple, like I said, basic crew designs. Next to Kushalane, you see it's it's almost like a, a small block with two little uh, things coming that would be almost like ears. And then coming down into a, a round circle in the center and like a very crude m line mouth drawn in what would be like a large belly. Uh, with Belias, you see uh, two horns and like some light circling around, like maybe like a ram, but then it goes into two giant arms. Again, all very, very simple, basic designs. And then she points and you see an amorphous figure and Feldspar, you realize this matches. It's just, it comes into a large body and then two large arms and next to one arm is a very crudely drawn pot. And she says, and that, Famfrit. And next to it, you do see the symbol of Aquarius. That She's, does track. But there's secrets within secrets. These are the type of things that need to be hidden from the world. The Zodiac Stones possess great power and terrible power. And it's based on the heart of the one who holds them. If you fall, if you succumb, when it offers you power freely to, to succeed at your goals, and when Famfred is talking to you, your body will become a vessel. You will become that. But even among the scholars who know this kind of thing, and again, Balthbar, you would have seen an image similar to this in your studies. Like I said, mm -hmm. kind of basic knowledge of like the Zodiac beings as you knew them, although it wouldn't have qualified them as demons, but like the existence of them being a thing. But the queen says, you see, power doesn't corrupt. Power reveals. You give in to darkness, it reveals the dark. Based on these old images, we've come to realize there are two halves with each of these. They're zodiac demons, but they are what we rather simply call zodiac angels. The reveal of what is light inside us. The reveal of what is really in your heart. Are you, at your core, someone who wants good or someone who wants evil? Kind. Maybe rough around the edges. But kind, as far as I'm aware, is not the bad one. If kind spoke to you at all, it's because 
he at least detected enough good in there to try making contact in the first place. And based on the stories I've read, from there he let Famfrit do his thing. You're probably being watched right now. Your choices, your actions, your beliefs. Can't tell y'all what to do. But I can tell you. One of these choices is a whole hell of a lot better than the other. What are the names of the other angels? <sighs> we don't know all of them per se. I know Kine. I know that for Leo, we know that the demon side of it is Hashmalum, the regulator. The angel on the other side is Hajin, the balance. And then we know Kushalain, the impure king, his flip side is Doma, the purifier. By and large, these things seem to mirror one another. If Much I like might, yours. If I might venture a guess, it seems that one offers power freely to those who would be tempted by it, and the other one responds to the one who summons it. Even them. Maybe. There are quite literally a handful of times in all of these tomes, in all of the recorded history of Ivalis, where these stones were used in some way and did not involve summoning up a demon from the depths of hell. It's so few that it's really hard to track. We just gotta go with our best theories on this. I think, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize, Lisa. No, no, uh, I just, Mama, does this have anything to do with us? The order? Is that? To some degree. We were here in the first place, garden knowledge. And then came a threat. A threat that endangered this place. And that's when uh, the bargain was made. Your, your Majesty. Your, your Majesty. Um. I have a question. Go on, girl. We've been told that there are orders of light and dark. And that there is a group that seeks the stones. And has for millennia. The Braves, were they all demons? And if so, is the church? I think you're starting to learn why people keep, why we keep things safe here. Oh no. So oh, wait no. a minute, wait a minute. Oh no. So you're saying all of this entire time? Are, are, are we been, have we been doing anything good this entire time? Your Highness, if I might explain. Um, well, some of us have been, I, best, I guess the best way to say it is, led to find things. We believe that there are people who are currently using us to unwittingly seek the stones. However, in our travels here, we come across some information about who those people might be. And who are they? Um, player to DM question. What is Melchior's last name? Tenjil. Do you happen to know of one... Melchior Tengeal. (sighs) 
I know of the Tangiel family. They've been part of the Shrine Knights for generations. Uh, I know of his father, Quastal, and I know of his his brother, Fulmarv. But Melchior, with the war going on, from what I heard, uh, became one of the great blades. Of, we do still get news here. Became one of the great blades of Ivalis in this war and started fighting for Limberry. He had connections to the church and the Shrine Knights, but that's about all I know. Do you know of anyone by the name of Anatolos? A wielder of... I dare not even say dark. That doesn't seem to cover it. It is a type of magic that seems to repel life in its very essence. Necromancy. Old, ancient necromancy. A form of contract magic. Anti-life. Quite literally, anti-life. Magic that death magic itself. There is necromancy as a, as a sub-school where people use it to revive the dead. But at its basic, most ancient core, much like there is life magic, there is death magic. There is no nuance. There is no subtlety. It is the magic of ending life wherever it hits. Whether that's Human life, animal life, natural life, it dies. Your Majesty, who was saying to Jora? <sighs> Saint Jora is what I'm going to tell you now. It's probably history's biggest con man. He sure did gather 12 souls to fight a force. And he got all these stones together that he had found. And one by one, they succumbed to the powers within. Because Ajora's goal is to revive Virgo's stone. And you see her point to the what is the, like, cardinal north of this circular image that's been carved out? Ultima. The Holy Seraph. Uh, and the only way to like do an that... like an angel name. The only way to do that is by bringing about the others. You see, Ultima is kind of like the head of all of them. Could bring about great life could bring about great destruction. Not a lot you can do to stop it. So she's both? Kinda. Ajora's the only one who's actually managed, as far as we can tell, in the last several thousand years to even try and summon forth Altima. And Ajora was stopped by the one follower who realized what was going on before it was too late. The one who the church calls the most heinous and evil of them all who sold him out, Germanic. In reality, he was trying to stop it before it was too late. What would happen if a seraph wielded that stone, specifically? So, unlike the other stone, the other stones just want to come into this world. They just want to be summoned and come alive and do what they do. Ultima's different. Ultima's pickier. Ultima's only coming in this place for the right person. I just sort of cut eyes at Zara. If, 
if the stones have been used before, what happens to the people who use them? You said that they, they succumb, they are, are taken over and become a vessel, but eventually the stones become deactivated, they go dormant. What happens to the people there? What happens to a log when you throw it in the fireplace for warmth? <sighs> That's too much power unleashed for a human body to handle. When it's fully unleashed, there ain't no coming back. See, the few times they've been summoned, someone's managed to defeat him. And it's slain the physical body of that thing. But the physical body is just manifested through someone else's life. They just return back to that world they came from. And that sacrifice was made by someone else entirely. Is there a way to stop them from doing that? When their physical body dies, is there a way to stop them from going back to their home? Not that we know. So these things, no matter what, they're always going to need a vessel so they can be here on this plane. As far as we can tell, the only safe way to handle these things is to keep them away from human hands, or if we can figure a way out to destroy them. But we haven't figured it out yet. I saw the creation of these stones. How did y'all get here again? Remember that dream you had? Consider it a shortcut, sort of. To put it another way, Your Highness, did the dream feel a little bit more vivid than your normal dreams are? So y'all came through the live stream. Is that what it's called? The current that runs under this world. Pure magical ether current. Connects everything. And you can absolutely lose yourself in it. If you saw that vision there, that's the world talking to you, baby. The formation of stars and the earth itself coincided with the creation of the stones. Which is what I've always been, assumed. I imagine that they've been used over and over again long before we have record of Saint Jean or the others. Human hubris will always lead to a downfall. I believe that was also a lesson we learned from the live stream as we found Gaff Garion. And there was a pause. It is a very bitter pause. Um, Gaff Garion, Anatolos, and Melchior Tengil having a conversation about their intentions for something heinous, I believe, involving the stones as one of the people in the conversation were seeking access to the stone that we've brought here. I'll tell you this, Where's right Beatrix? When we came out of the live stream, we were here, but Beatrix was not. She got pulled back to wherever she came from originally. Did she? I certainly hope so. The queen looks at Zeros after the previous statement and says, Well, and I'll tell you this right now. If you ain't trying to find the stones for nothing other than keeping them out of the hands of someone, whatever reason you want, whether you like it or not, because of how these things work, it's nefarious. The road to hell is paved with good intention. Don't, but it don't matter whether you got good intention or not. If you're finding these for power, you're gonna lose. Well, the people who are seeking them certainly are. And I suppose I will consider it the gift of the live stream that we know this and that they do not know that we know. 
You said you found a containment unit, right? A Leo, yes. Minus the stone. Had to be Leo. Leo's the regulator. Hash Mallow. Leo's got a special job. Leo was always Altima's right hand man. Hash Malum's job is to find the other stones and to find the vessel. His work is to bring her back, and he takes it more seriously than any of the others. If you found Leo's containment unit, my guess is someone found Leo. So we should be expecting Ultima sooner rather than later. Not without the other stones. Unfortunately, what that means is that leaving this stone here, depending, could lead to... And I look at both Salacia and the Queen kind of seriously for a moment. Somewhat serious consequences if he finds out that stone is here. He can't leave the stone here. I do think there would be serious consequences for them if they came to try and take it. Unless there's a containment unit that we can find for Aquarius here. You saw. They'll do anything for the stone, and I don't think Anatolos has Leo. I think Anatolos just has this power. Imagine what would happen if Leo directly came here. I should warn the guards to be, we should set lookouts. Uh, here, and you see her hand, uh, the brazier to Salacia, uh, a literal passing of the torch. And she said, I will be back shortly to answer some more of your questions. And you see her walking off, and she leaves you all here in this spot, like I said, around this table. Uh, and you look and you see nearby, there's also a couple other small, like, wooden cases with glass around them. Uh, and Fallon, you notice there is some tech. There is some old stuff here. Um, you see what looks like some of the most primal, basic, early attempts at uh, firearms. You see yeah. uh, at explosives. And then you start seeing things that look odd. They're clearly old. Like, even old, like, they're very old, but they're oddly refined. Like, much how before, how you saw the astrolabe and you knew it was truly ancient tech, but it operated on such a basic and refined level that it was like, wow, it was like nothing you'd ever seen. Same thing. Yeah. There's stuff here that it's old, but the way all the pieces and lines work, there's very, very thin bars around, incredibly small diodes and pieces and points where it's like, this stuff is ancient, but you wouldn't have, like, you would have to dig in with it in order to know what it does. Like, mind you, it's behind glass, but it's impressive the type of stuff that's gathered. How many civilizations have come and fallen? So far? All of them. Wanna bet that it all coincided with something to do with these stones. More than likely, there's... I told you that I, I trained with the Order to control my <clears throat> problem. Every member of the Order has the same problem. We train ruthlessly. Um, sun up to sun down, everyone who has it in their blood <clears throat> to not so much master it as not be swallowed up by it. Wait but there sec- are times. I'm sorry? Where does that come from? Hubris. Um, there were men here once upon a very, very long time ago. Um, we never knew why. We never knew why any of it happened. And that was part of the anger is this was done to us. And we never knew why, what would be worth it. And now I know um, 
thousands of years ago, um, there was a man in my family line named Mohawk. Uh, he was under the influence of the church, funnily enough. And I suppose when he found out about the stones or what the church really is, he was desperate and he went looking for anything that could even out the balance of power. And what he found was a dragon. And he bound himself to it with blood and he thought he could control it. And he couldn't. And as a result, he lost control of it. It consumed him. And now everyone descended from his bloodline, no matter how few drops, has a little bit of it in it. The, the royal line has it particularly strongly. I mean, um, you're pretty, you're pretty strong for having to deal with that. It is a strength I would not wish on any human being. No, it's. And he like sits down, like cross-legged, and like folds his arms. So, Lacey, remember what I said that I know what it's like to feel like you got something burning up inside of you. Something just aching to get out. I know that feeling. Like, the reason why I feel I like to fight so much is because it's got something burning inside of me that tells me to fight. That if I don't stop fighting, I feel like that thing inside of me is going to consume me up. And I'm just going to, I don't know, burn out or something like that. So hearing what you're going through, hearing what your mom said about people taking the power of the stones and they could just burn up after using it, even if it is with these Zodiac angels using them. They could still burn up afterwards. It's, I don't know, it just, that shit hits home. And I really don't want that kind of feeling to be put on anyone, knowing that you have that in you. It's easier when I'm home. Where I know that everywhere I look, everybody knows the thing that's inside of me and are reasonably wary of it, but not afraid. The fear's the worst part, I think. My point is, there are plenty of ancient evils. There are all kinds of ancient evils. And somehow, I think thanks to you all, the one in me is on a leash. And that's never happened before. So it stands to reason that there is an eventuality where someone with the right heart uses this stone and puts it down again. Salacia. I don't think you should touch these stones if we come across them. I don't think you're wrong. I don't particularly think of myself as desirous of power. But confronting this stone, I realized there are different types of power you can hunger for. Knowledge is one of them. And that's what was offered to me. And it was very difficult to not respond. The upside to being raised to fear yourself just a little bit is that 
The second we got in the room with those stones, I knew I had no business anywhere near it. That's why I haven't touched it. Not even the case. We should look around. There's more knowledge here than is contained even within the church itself. But the more we learn, the scare, more scared I get of this. I wonder how much knowledge there is about a couple of things. What is the span of knowledge that they keep here? My mother's a collector, so everything but the kitchen sink. Mm. What's a sink? Or, it, you know, it's sort of like when we're at camp and we use one of those big silver bowls to wash all of our hands, except mm. that uh, the water comes out of a, a spout, sort of. It's very modern. It's very interesting. That's just mm. fancy. That's some type of magic I've never encountered. Anyway. Do you think perhaps they would have knowledge about, and I pull out the copy of like the, like the tree mm. that we made. I think that the genealogy of any family, let alone someone connected to a royal family of Iblis, would strike my mother's fancy. It's gonna and be this, anywhere. This is much older than your mother, so. Well, maybe we could possibly find out what did happen in that 50 years war that was removed from that book. Exactly. What are they trying to hide? Well, and I walk toward, I walk toward like books and start looking for references to the 50 years war. So hit me with an intuition roll. Oh, okay. Nope, I can't use it for that. Okay, your intuition roll is a twelve. Are you talking about your 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 skill? Like there is one for like favorable insight, but I'm just like I don't think that's going to help here because I'm already um, looking for a book. So I'm going to say you can use favorable insight to roll again if you want and take the higher answer because it's, again, it's a library. You're used to the idea of going through a library. Now, whether this is organized quite as well as Garland is a different question, but like... Okay, so that's... This core it, concept that, is the same. Um, that is a 12 for you. 12, okay, still. So. Um, so as you're looking, you... Don't see anything on the 50 Years War because you're, I mean, you're actively in the war. Like, the war is going on. Uh, and a lot of these books are, again, very old. But you begin looking, trying to find something that makes sense of the, the information you've been getting and you've been hearing and what have you. Um, and as you're looking, eventually, you start finding that the way this place is laid out, books kind of tend to go... First historically and then regionally. Mm. And using your knowledge, you start maneuvering to books that are in the, for instance, the Garland area. The families from there would make sense. And what you find is you start finding a few different family genealogies and written histories. And so you keep searching. And suddenly, one of these books does catch your eye, and you see a annotated history of the Holsteads. But one thing you notice is that book is definitely bigger than your book. Obviously, you're holding the, the copy of the family tree, but even the book you remember holding was smaller than this. Mm hmm. I pulled that book from the shelf and walk over to the nearest surface to start opening and reading. And as you open and start reading, you see that it starts much further back. This goes back hundreds of years. Fox Going back. Look at this. And you yeah. come to the realization 
as you're looking. This goes back to before even the sighted time of the Zodiac Braves. Is that the slime tried to reinvent itself? Hmm. You you remember this book? Well, Hmm. from the library. Well, perhaps I should return it and maybe one day I will. But this other book contains... Wait, you stole the book? I borrowed it. It didn't have a return date. Mm. I'll make sure to return it in the condition I borrowed it in. Hmm. Besides, I'm sure you would strike me down if I didn't. Hmm. But I digress. This book, this larger book that they have here, contains everything this book has and hundreds of years more. So the family line goes further back in importance. Who's the first listed name? So when you look, the first name that you notice is Albrecht Holstead. And that name debuts a couple of hundred years before, as stated, the, the, the time of Ajora Globidos walking the earth. And you see that the way that the, that tree is designed, essentially like there's a line off shooting and then leading to there. It's not like you just came into being, but essentially like the, the likely guess is essentially that was the splintering of another old family. And this person essentially at this point, like maybe they were an orphan and they gave themselves a name. Maybe they were someone who, you know, they, they changed their name wanting to disassociate with the old family. But as far as the official creation of the Holstead house, Albrecht Holstead is where it starts. Who were the members of the Fifty Years' War, Xerox? So, again... the the Fifty Years' War, the Zodiac Braves. Right. Uh, When you look there, you see around the time the Zodiac Braves were going on, there is a mention of two different Holstead, like uh, two different branches of the Holstead family. Um, And one goes down, continues along the family line. Uh, Zelius, Holstead, everything is fine, everything's normal. The other offshoots to the side and you see Branskin Holstead. And both of you do me a favor and give me an intuition roll. Okay. How about I just give Zeris advantage if that's a thing in the system? <laughs> I'm, you know what? I'm going to house rule it. Zeros, you can roll twice. Mm-hmm. I'm helping. Oh. This is your deal there. Okay. Thirteen on intuition. Everyone's heard the stories of the Zodiac Braves. And whether or not you're a follower enough, at some point, you've heard the names. And while he's not exactly someone super popular or well-mentioned, you do remember that Branskin was one of the Zodiac Braves. Although you only ever knew the first name. You did not know that he might have been connected to any house or anything. Which one? Oh no, like I said, while the branch is an offshoot and it just kind of No, which ends zodiac it. stone? Oh. Uh you so you wouldn't um less a stone, but in other words, uh he was always lined up as being attached to uh cancer. So that's why Marigold's family is involved. Between here and where we find Marigold, which I'm assuming is there. um, In this book, the mention of Marigold Holstead has not been removed for fairly obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Although because of when the book would have actually been here and annotated, Um, You can see that, like, the very, very newest layer of names are not mentioned. So it's this book has likely not been updated for decade plus, uh, maybe 15, 20 years. Like, this is the kind of thing where these books. So you can draw the conclusion that while this place is constantly being updated as necessary on genealogies and the like by whoever is privy to here, obviously 
so much movement means it's not like they're updating every single family on a day to day. Right. How far back does, like, I guess, what's the closest to the present time that it goes? No, but that's what I was saying. So, Marigold, however, is still listed. Like, Marigold she's, is in. She is her there. She's not 40s, hit. 50s? Right. Like so, in other words, like, you're missing maybe the last. Like, within a generation. 15, right. Maybe the last 15 years worth of births. But okay. as a result, she's still definitely there. Zaras? Oh, no, go ahead. Um,. The last question I'll ask is, in the previous book, there were pages torn out, like literally missing, right? Since we're in a book with a more complete record, are those torn pages there and what do they have on them? Hmm. So if you're flipping through, this is an annotated, it's not just a genealogical line, it's an annotated family history. It denotes birth dates, it denotes death dates, it denotes major occurrences. And when you flip, you find in the other book, there was no acknowledgement of Marigold Holstead. But in this book, it does acknowledge her birth. It acknowledges her birth. It acknowledges her being married to the Count Alexandros and the connections thereof. So, now you can truly know that that other book was absolutely tampered with to kind of have people forget the connection of someone to this family. Zeros? I think we need to find a copy of my family's genealogy here. Immediately. At your service? But who are we looking for? We're looking for who was ever around during the time of the Zodiac Braves. Marigold is Feldspar's mother. No. No. No, no, no. Stepmother. Well, not even stepmother. Um, my... Oh, sorry. Marigold's not my mother. My mother, Opal, was the mistress of Garnet to Alexandros. So, we need to follow the Alexandros line. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I kind of go back to the Garolin section that I found earlier, and I look around until I find the Alexandros section. And as you're looking, you do find it, and you pull the book down, and you start looking, and you see this book a little different. You start looking because it's your natural predilection because as stated, your search is to look for whoever was, you know, whoever was the one who was around during the, the time of St. Ajora. And you just see the family tree continue on. You see Hezekiah Alexandros and you see Harmut and Alexandros. It, keeps the male genealogical line since other people male married in and you see those who were married in and what have you but you don't notice anything that sticks out and while you literally just remembered the Zodiac Braves this family you don't rem you don't there's no Hezekiah or Helmut as, among them so that doesn't line up but one thing you notice is this book doesn't go a couple hundred years back this book goes a couple thousand years back. As you start flipping, you realize this family goes way, way, way back. So I go, I pick up the book and walk over to the fellas and I go, I think this is what you're looking for. Felds, this book is like two to three times the size of the last book I brought. Oh no. I'm going to pull it in between both of us and first, I'm going to flip towards where the first name is. As in the oldest name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you see that what is written there is His High Summoner Holiness, Ezekiel Alexandros. Okay. 
And if you flip to where the annotated history is, you see Ezekiel Alexandros, born circa 2847 before Ajora time. And you see a few notations of established the House of Alexandros. You see, um, captained in the first great cataclysmic war. And you see, note, worked to form the League of Light. And then the words League of Light has lines scratched next to it that say the order. Referring to the Order of Light, not the, not Salacious Order, right? Assumedly? Assumedly? It just says the Order. I would like to use Spirit Sight of the book just in case. Go ahead and roll for me. Oh, Lord. Roll Spirit, or Aura in this case. Okay. Um, that is a 14 on Aura. You notice that in the book, the words, the order, have a very faint magical glow to them, but not the League of Light. Mm -hmm. And you can't quite put your finger on it, but the magic sense you get does feel a bit familiar to your surroundings. There is... And, like, what would happen is, uh, I think Feldspar would see me look, like, really closely at the page, and then my eyes start glowing when I run a finger by the order and go like you see me poking at it like I'm trying to reach something this there is magic on this text right here (laughs) I do not know what kind of magic it is because you got a 14 one thing I can tell you is and you've been rolling well as far as stuff, you can take the logical path that it's not like the two of you are necessarily like distant relatives or anything along those lines. Um, because... Meaning me and Salacia. Right. That the two of... I should have clarified that Salacia and Feldspar are distant relatives uh, because you would have seen at some point in the family genealogy, like you, you flip through pages, at some point you would have seen a far Cyrus name somewhere along there, you know? We don't need to be related to be part, like, so but, an order isn't a family. It's... Exactly. So this is more, you can gather the connection if that is there, that your ancient ancestor was involved in the formation of this order as it was known. But it was simply called the order. Why would they call it anything else when they're a part of it? This book isn't meant to be a reference for anyone else. Well, if that's the case, then perhaps. Can I go back to the bookshelf and see if I can find anything, no matter how obscure, about things that are just called the order, period, as opposed to the order of the order and or anything else? Uh, so... I'm going to say hit me with a resolve roll. Because well, at this point, you're just trying to just gut out. Just, like, your gut instinct tells you... There's something more here. I'm not sure what it is. I'm just going to hunt. All right. While Um, that's happening, I'm going to flip to the Zodiac Age so we can resolve it after, but... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just don't want to do So I'm going to tell you, like, here's what I want to do. I'm going to tell you what the role is, and then I want Feldspar to have, like, do do their thing, and then I'm going to go find the other book. Um, So you said resolve? Yes. That is a 17. Beautiful. Sensational. So when you were- Sensational. 
Ha ha. So when you flip it over to the Zodiac era, um, like I said, you find Hezekiah and Helmut, um, Hezekiah and Helmut Alexandros there, but they don't line up. And when you're flipping through like their accomplishments, it's very much so uh, they were born, they were married, they had children, they died. There's no notable accomplishments of them from that area. You can presume that at least in regards to this, your family was not directly involved in any of the Zodiac Braves situation. Mm -hmm. Zeros, you're going through these books and with a 17, God damn it, you find a book on an annotated history of the Order, specifically the Order of Light. And when you pull it out, you start looking through it and flipping through pages and something very early that catches your eye and that you realize is the Order of Light is itself a fragmented offshoot of the Order of Ophidius, which was here first. And based on the information you got from Salacia moments ago, what you can kind of identify as what is most likely the dividing line is when the pact was made, the group splintered. The Order of Ophidius was already established, keeping knowledge safe, keeping order and keeping light. And when there was that pact and there was the need to separate and drive the hubris of man out quite literally, the men who were booted out did not wish to just return to the world and do no good anymore. And so they formed the Order of Light, which attempted to do things more hands-on. Instead of guarding and protecting knowledge, they wished to actively strike against darkness. No wonder that man was so fucking annoying. Is, wise, is Wiseman in this book? I'm just gonna ask. If you Wiseman flip the to the end, you see that the people who were most recently added were people who were noted as part of the Order some 10 ten-ish years ago. And you see, as of about that time, do you I see a see name... the word Wiseman, or is it his actual name? You do not see the name Wiseman, but you do see the name you recognized Virgil having stated of Graf. So there was a pact there was a pact. You mean the pact made with the dragon? The dragon pact. That okay. if that event seems to have been the schism of this whole thing, and it is discussed in the book. I just, well, uh, I just I close the book and I just quietly put that back on the shelf and go, well. Um, kind of walked back to Felsborn and was like, well, I know what order they're talking about now. And? And? It's the order that one of your favorite people belongs to. I'm not a part of an order. What are you talking about? <laughs> I so did my her. ancestor... Wait. Did my ancestor cause the dragon problem? Actually, as far back as I was able to like absorb from that book, did any like did no. any No, 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 no. Oh, thank no. God. No, one of the things you see is like this is the the Good. dragon situation, Good. that's again, that is direct line of that's succession. Later. That's later. Well, yeah. And that direct line of succession of the bloodline to... Oh, that's not what I meant. I meant like... Oh. Oh. I meant like... I didn't mean that my ancestor is Celestia's ancestor. I meant did my high summoner ancestor help summon this dragon? No. Okay, cool. No, that they're was... Different, they're part of different times, right? Uh, 
You put the book back, but I will say you had to have skimmed some in order I to did. get this information. Uh, you would see like that exactly it was a different thing, and also that decision. And one of the things they outlined was that was quite literally the hubris and folly of man. Emphasis singular. Yes. This was one person deciding, I have to protect people, and so I'm going to go against the knowledge and will of everyone yes. around me and do what it. What time way. period did my high summoner ancestor exist in, and what time period did the schism happen? Uh, Are they different the, timelines? Yes. Are they different times? Separation okay, cool. of a couple hundred years. Okay, cool. Because I was just like, okay, so did my high summoner ancestor found this order or the section, the other the, thing? Your, the ancestor would have founded the order of Ophi helped be a part of the creation of the order of Ophidius as an existing entity. Okay, that's not, all I needed. Right, not, okay. not the so... dragon part. There is one question I have. Yes. Cesaris. Oh. And I'm going to call Salacia. Salacia, can you come here for a second? What, what'd you find? Um, oh, nothing. No, no, my ancestor founded this order, but that's not the important part. Helped found, to be clear. Whatever. Helped found. <laughs> just Helped wanna, found this order. Just want, to, just want to state for the record. No, that's totally fair. Helped yeah. found this order, but that's not the important part. Where does the name Order of a Ficken come from? Ophidian is, it's not just a reference. The word itself means snake, serpent, but it's mm. its not just a reference to the dragon. Uh, in our culture, a serpent is deceptive, evil, it's just a dragon without wings, really. But the name of this order is far older than the schism, correct? Our people have always had an affinity for dragons, for scaled things, for unusual things that the world at large maybe doesn't understand, or people of knowledge, collective memory. Um, it certainly wouldn't have been, well, ill-advised, it wouldn't have been entirely out of left field for my ancestor to summon a dragon. Sinesia, I have a feeling in my gut, and I don't know if it's correct. Josh. In normal understandings of the Zodiac and <laughs> research of the Zodiac, which is heavily involved in this world, <laughs> has there ever been mention of a 13th? It's been theorized because of the way that the Zodiac line actually goes through the sky that there, it, it's weird that it lines up that we don't acknowledge the 13th potential Zodiac, Serpentarius. Or Ficuous, correct? Would it help to mention that that was the name of the dragon? Aficuous? The name of the dragon was Aficuous. Yes. That's the 13th zodiac sign. The one theorized to be among the others, but never confirmed or never thought or talked about. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you pretty much saying that the order all of this was started by this unknown 13th Zodiac. I'm saying that it was part of it. Most likely, I'm gonna go to the table, the main table, and I'm gonna look and I'm gonna tap and I'm gonna poke everywhere to see if there's like a secret thing there. Can I follow Feldspar and just- She just drags you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while well, I'm getting pulled by my- yeah, I was about to say, just, you, yes, uh, apparently. <laughs> Can I run my hand across the old ebullition as we just kind of go around to the perimeter of the table and see if I make anything happen? Absolutely. So as you're messing with the table and the image and everything, you're looking for anything you can find. Um, you notice 
in the corner, and it's circular, but it's in the corner, there's some little writing that doesn't seem to ascribe to the rest of the table. And it says, again, it's hard because it's such ancient tongue, so it doesn't phrase properly, but as far as you can see, it says, slithering eyes, traitorous heart. Fount of knowledge. Life or death. Meanwhile, Salacia starts, and again, there's a glass case over it, but you start like running your hand around the side because you can touch the actual wood of the table itself. Start running, start seeing, and around the edges of the table, it's not so much that like the table lights up and all this stuff happens, but you feel a sort of refractive, like an energy in you. Like this is a magical object. You're not sure what it is, but in touching it, you realize the this whole time that you've been home, the spirit inside you has been very dormant. You've been in a place of comfort. And so whether or not anything around might amplify it in general, this is such a safe and comfortable space for you, a place where you've always been safe, that like your whole body has been at ease and it's almost seemed to keep everything in check. But as you touch this table, you start feeling something inside you is reacting, is reaching out. It knows that there's something, it's not literally reaching out, but like you no, feel- No, I mean, I pull right, my hands back. But you feel like it knows there's something more there. Salation, so what's happening? Um, the table, the, the table is, Magic. Um, I think you might be right, Felspar, because the table wants me to touch it. It wants me to understand it. I think it recognizes me. Fallon. Yeah, yeah. Can you come check this location with me? Of course. When we... The containment unit for Leo was mm -hmm. mechanical and magical in nature. Mm -hmm. We need to examine this location. So they should, um, just take a step back. Fallon, do me a favor and give me a, give me a resolve roll. Okay. Can I just help the same way I helped? Okay. You're basically looking together. You, neither of you, uh, I'll let you do it. So Fallon, roll twice. Give me the better result. It's a case this of- This is intuition? Uh, resolve. Ah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna it's, walk over to Salacia. Neither of you man. really knows what you're looking for. You're just looking for something. This is, again, you're trying to will this into existence. Um, I got an 11. Okay. Did you roll twice? I did roll twice. I rolled a five, and, or a four and a five. Okay, and you got six for resolve, so. Yes. Um, so as you're searching, you start looking, you realize you're looking through the table, you're looking, and it's very ornate woodwork mm -hmm. um, with bits of like silver metallic inlay. You realize as you're looking at the top through the glass, all the stuff that's etched into the table as you look really closely, it's carved in, but it's like it's inlaid with some bits of silver and other metals, um, whether they're magic or what have you in variety, you can see that. As you're looking, you see it's very, very intricate stonework with these little bits of silvers meshing through it like veins. And all of a sudden, as you are you're coming around, you see there's a little portion that it's a little nodule that sticks out. And when you grab, you're grabbing and just trying to look for anything that could maybe be an entry port or a screw or something. When you grab it, you realize it it shifts slightly and you can move it slightly like a dial and so as you stand there you begin turning it and as you do the table itself the top of it begins to turn 
And as it turns, you see the center of it begin pulling back and revealing a small opening in the center. Like it actually, op- like it's shifting and turning and plates are moving and then underneath out of the way to reveal a small opening and the opening lifts up and in the center of it, you see a small green stone. Oh. And that stone has a symbol on it that doesn't quite line up with any of the standard zodiac symbols, you know. Like Aquarius has the simple jagged lines, Taurus has the line, roll around another line, mm-hmm. things like this. It doesn't line up with any of those. It actually is a symbol of an Ouroboros, a snake eating itself. Mm. I think Salacia undoes the white wrap on her hand, leaving the black one on, and holds up her hand to show the Ouroboros tattoo on the back. Huh. Okay. I think... I think a lot of things, but Salacia, if this stone is here and they need all the Zodiac to revive Ultima, then that means they've probably been here before. But there's no mention of this in the Zodiac Brave stories. They may not know that this exists. Or, like many other things that we learn in this library, they have gone to links to make sure that other people don't know. I think we'll have to ask my mother. In our culture, in the order you know things when you're meant to know them, a, a desire for knowledge can easily turn into a thirst and then a desperation for knowledge. So it's meet it out and fits and starts over time to make sure that whoever is learning or maintaining the information doesn't go mad, frankly. Salacia, your line's blood was corrupted by the summoning of a dragon that was linked. A dragon that shares the name of the zodiac symbol that's on that stone. I follow. Um, I'm really, really hoping that that's not what it is, but it would certainly explain some things. The question is, is how did your ancestors survive long enough to get this bloodline corrupted? That implies that That implies something. What if they didn't? Our symbol is the Ouroboros. It's a symbol of life and death and rebirth and cycles. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if, um... Life and death anti-life and life. It's both. This stone, your order, your bloodline represent the merger of both, where they connect, where one leads into the other. If your ancestor lived before this dragon attacked or anything, I, I wonder if the church is not the only one whose history is a little bit changed. I look at, I give like Salacia a very long look while all of this is being explained. It is probably the longest moment of completely unbroken eye contact that you have gotten from me since the start of this adventure. 
Josh. I would like to reach inside of myself and I would like to speak to Ophiuchus. Okay. I'm not going to make you roll for it because you already had such control in this place. But then flip side, he's responding to this. So right now we have a person in great control trying to talk to someone who's trying to speak. Ophiuchus, that is your name. Right? What a bitch! What are you really? I am the beginning. I am that that stands outside of it all. I am the first one. Why my entire bloodline? Why not just the one responsible? I exist beyond all these others. Ultima wishes that she could enter this world as I do. My hold will never break on this plane. You didn't answer my question. Why my bloodline? Why all of us forever? Because through the blood can I reach the next. The blood always travels. So, unlike the others, you don't want to rule, and I'm guessing you don't need your stone to be used because you have us. The stone is the portal to my true, unrelinquished form. But as I already have willing vessels, I operate differently. I'm assuming that that's why the queen locks the stone away. It stays hidden and you stay active. Ah, that one. She has always been a step further than my plans would allow. She always will be. Get used to it like the rest of us. Feel free to continue gloating now. But your blood will always be my blood. Well, yes, that much is established, and you are on a leash. Oh. Are you talking out loud when you say this, or are you talking just inside yourself? I think I'm talking aloud. Salacia, your eyes are weird, and what are you doing? Getting our questions answered. Hmm. By whom? Oh, I know who she's having a conversation with. The thing inside you? The thing inside of me is apparently a fire kiss. Silesia, your mother just told us there are always two. If a fire kiss exists in you, then the other one must as well. All of the same thing, life and death. There's another half to you. Well, a fire kiss. Are you a circle that completes itself or is there a counterpart to you? You. 
that that thing, that man, that Elidibus. Elidibus. That other one. Think he's so high and mighty, for his power needs not be within the blood. He shall have his fall. Where is his power? If it's not in the blood, where is it? Feldspar's just going to point at the stone. It seems your friend understands that which takes you some time. It seems that you're rude and still on a leash. Oh. Oh. Celestia? Every time you say, by the way, the the still on a leash, you can feel it a little. I think my nose is starting to bleed a little bit because I feel that like snapping of jaws every time and I just. Celestia. Two things. One, if this is true, you found a way to control a Zodiac demon, which not only has never happened in your line, may have never happened at all. And two, knowing what I know from talking to Femfrit and Kine, there is a chance that if you were to hold that stone and were to talk to this other half, that you could rid yourself of the other one. And maybe your entire bloodline. Does that make sense to you? Or am I just talking out of my... No. <laughs> ass? <laughs> it makes sense. Uh, Aviacus doesn't need the stone. Not anymore. No. It's It's got us. It's got our bloodline. But the other thing... The other thing is still in the stone, and it's trapped. So the question is... Not trapped. That was not the feeling I got from... The Aquarius stone. Waiting. I, th I think it is, though, because why didn't they both come? The summoning was done. The stone was ready to be used. Because your ancestor wasn't worthy. Remember what your mother said. If you choose it for your own goals, then the other one won't. Remember? Yes. Remember. And suddenly, you all turn to where that voice came from. And you see coming around the corner is the, the queen, Aloysia, with a knife at her neck being pushed forward by a man behind her. <clears throat> and that man is your commander, Melchior Tengio. I think it's time we all had a little chat. Shut up. Your Highness, are you all right? I'm fine, honey, but just don't worry about me. Oh, oh, you may need to worry about her, all right. But the thing about that is, it's all going to depend on all of your choices. Carbuncle. I'm gonna have Carbuncle jump out and blind everyone immediately. So the light flashes. Everybody, absolutely bright light happens. And as it, as it flashes out, you hear, think twice. 
a blade at the neck can quickly push in. We can have a simple chat, or there can be bodies on the ground. I think Ferg. you know which is the wiser choice. Virgil just slides up next to Salacia. Just give me the word. There is no violence in a parlay. You will release the queen, and then we will talk. And on that note, with the blade held to the queen's neck, but no response yet, we come to the end of episode eight of A Tale oh, of the Lions. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. No, fuck I'm stressed. You, oh, fuck. God, fuck you. Also, is the light still in the room? Are we still not able to see? Uh, you're all recovering from it. Well, I want to do a thing, all... but it's fine. Fuck. It's fine. Right. I should have sensed that you want to end the episode. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. You can probably, like, you'll be able to play off it at the beginning of the next if you want. Okay. Like, the oh. light is still blinding. And if you want to say, like, Carbuncle extends the light, everyone's talking while there's blindness going on, we can absolutely roll with that. Mm -hmm. But! Thank you all so very much for hanging out with tonight. I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course you did, bastard. Yeah, yeah asshole. Um, wow! Yes, um, hold on for a You're, moment. You I'm sorry. A, you have my mom at gunpoint, basically. Hold well, on for a second. first of all, Fallon has Now, now summoning the Norian to tabletop court, case number 165. How do you Um... Where's the law and order sound when you need it? Because honestly, jail. Tum, tum. Yes. Um, thank you all for hanging out with us tonight, though, because I'm glad I got to traumatize you all today. I literally tweeted earlier. I literally tweeted earlier. No one is ready for what I have planned, least of all the cast. Yeah. And y'all just... I also just... feel very smart. <laughs> but... Yeah, first let me go ahead and do our, our little call outs for, the, for our sponsors and thanks for all that. If you hit an exclamation point Valor in chat, you will get the link to Valor's games. The Valor system is what we are using to run our fun little game where I traumatize people. If you hit exclamation point Valor, you'll see the link to Valor's games website. You'll see the link to the Valor's games Twitter where you can find links to all of their products including the main game of the Valor role playing system. There was a recent Kickstarter that they launched to reprint the book, put some new stuff, that's great. They have more books and more products coming through the pipeline definitely keep an eye out for it it's wonderful it's awesome y'all should use it it's great and we love them it's crunchy but as you can see when you got rp it's very quick very easy very free flowing and you can really use it to just roll through things flip side we have our virtual tabletop that we use on the back end for everything Adventuring Kit. If you hit exclamation point adventure in chat, you will find a link to the Adventuring Kit website. While you're there, you'll see you can make a free account for up to five people per singular campaign, have multiple campaigns going. You can easily do dice rolling, provide maps, provide objects, keep them to specific players, have them for the whole group, and everything is very fast, very efficient, immediately seen, and very, very smooth to work with, with almost no lag. It's a wonderful system. It's by the devs, for the devs, by the people, for the people, however you want to put it. It's made by a tabletop player. He's used it for like multiple campaigns that have run years as he's been build, building it. So he it's being made by someone who knows what should be good. And so it's a very smooth system and I just love using it. Uh, if you use X, uh, code GAMEDAD in all caps, if you happen to sign up for a premium account, you will get 25% off of your monthly subscription price. And you can use that basically every month. So I encourage you to. And now that I've been doing that, no, now that I fixed it earlier, I can properly do this. One of our own can use some assistance. So for a third sponsor shout out, I need folks to hit exclamation point DK in chat because the lovely, the wonderful, the awesome DK could use a little assistance right now uh, because people are a fuck as, as, mm -hmm. as the, as the one SJH does games would be quoted as saying, and we love mm -hmm. that person around here. So yep. exclamation point DK, give to DK. Just flatly. I'm not going to qualify it. I'm not going to be like, and you get no, just give to DK. That's the end of it. That's the discussion. Do it because I said so. Do it because I said so. Okay, how's that? Rub butt for good and give to DK. It's that simple. Do you want good skin? Do you want, yeah. do you want mm -hmm. nice pores? Okay. Do you want watered crops? Do you want to reap what you're sowing? 
So you want to get rub- laid anytime in the future? Exactly. Rub butt and give to DK. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily at the same time, but if you can have one hand you one, can. one hand for the other, <laughs> go for it. Yeah. I'm, I will only really be more to. impressed. If you really want to. And now let's go to people other than me and roll this out. Because now I realize how the actual overlay is set. Like I didn't just properly redo it and build it out. Hey, Lexi, go ahead and let the people know who you are and where you are and what, what you do. Up? Yeah, what up? My name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. Uh, I have been Fallon. Uh, she is in love with everyone in this city, uh, except for this stinky boy who has a blade to the queen's neck. I knew y'all weren't going to like me at the end of this session, despite the but fact nope. that I gave you Buff Lady nope. Village. Whatever, nope. Josh. You you took it away. I knew it wouldn't Excuse be enough. Excuse you, so Buff Lady me. Kingdom? That's yes. a good point, yes. Yes. Thank you. I knew yes. even the that BFK, wouldn't save me. The Buff Lady Kingdom. BFK. I tried tying the two events together, BFK. but I knew. I knew Just it wasn't enough. hate you. Uh, Hold but, on. Yeah. Hold on. The Buff Lady Kingdom? And not the massive muscle matriarchy. <gasps> you're right. Oh. You're right. You're right. You're right. They can rock. Touche. Me whenever the triple they want M, to. which is my cup size. Anyway, Lexi. Ah. Fallon has been going through some bi feelings. Yes. Um. Yes. My name's Lexi. If you go to Twitch and Twitter, uh, Twitter, you know, at Black Girl Mage, even though it is imploding, I will be there talking about tabletop stuff, talking about storytelling and D and D stuff. Currently, I am uh, a player here, but also I am a dungeon master for the all black HBCU inspired Strixhaven campaign called Strix U. Mm-hmm. We are finishing up our sophomore year. The finale is dropping this Wednesday at Shit. eight p.m. EST, 5 p.m. PST. Uh, there's some juice in this episode. I wish that I was, I the wish, I, I want to share the juice so badly. Uh, but yeah, this week I'll probably just be posting playlists and also harping about the premiere. So catch me over uh, at Black Girl Mage for that. All righty. And I'm passing it to Wally. What's up, y'all? It's me, Wally. You can find me on Twitter when it's not becoming the endless hellscape that it is at W A L E one three two, like the cute little Disney robot. Uh, you can outside of finding me here and over on Black Girl Mage. You can find me over at GTK Game Nights, playing some Monster of the Week every Thursday, and then playing some Dragon Age TTRPG every Friday night at ten p.m. It's a grand old time, lots of fun. Come check us out. And I myself have been playing Virgil, who I am going through some uh, some ideas of what Vir- of Virgil's like whole mindset of his sexuality you know I've been thinking about it it's been um coming to fruition you know also I came up with I, I now have a character theory about Virgil that I'm gonna yell at you about Josh so yeah I gotta hear it too I want to well, hear it well yeah I I think uh Josh sprinkled in why Virgil survived the explosion what yeah he did he, he what? Said, I'll tell you. What? I think he did. What? I think he did. He may have accidentally may have dropped it. What? I need. To, we need to talk post game. Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> but anyway, Aren't that's fucking. Fun. That's me. I'm gonna pass it over on to uh, who's next? Who's next? Uh, Sin. Yeah, I'm gonna pass over to Sin. Hey, hey, everybody. It's me. Um. So, I I have been zeros the um magical bookworm um, right behind Feld. And um, apparently, um, Salatia and I are going to have to have a talk uh, because apparently we are more connected than um, I originally planned for, and it is very fitting in theme. We will talk about that post game as well. Um, aside from that, though, you can find me here on Mondays. Uh, you can find me with Major Lytics and crew on Thursdays, and you can find me playing Hollow Knight this week, either Tuesday or Wednesday, um, and Ampestrano on Saturday, where we're going to have our first of two season finale episodes, where um, I have a really angry person at a school to talk to um, with an equally angry party who is feeling kind of smitey. I'm looking forward to it. And DK? Hi, that's me. Uh, I have been Salacia Farsiris, and I'm 
<laughs> it's a good thing that you stopped the episode where you did, Josh, because I was going to do something real stupid, and I'm still going to do it. But now I have time to think about it. So Grab thank you for that. Now you can Grab blind about it. No, I'm fully, I'm That's the grass. entire reason I blinded everyone. Yes. Yep. I wanted Smash you to grab the stuff. That That's what I wanted. Rose said, "Give me the signal." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, you take the week that you need to figure out what to do with me once I'm a little bit of a god, because. That's happening. Uh, you can find me at Avadarlings on Twitter, being a normal human being, being and wishing desperately that I was a biblical angel. You can also find me on Exquisite Corpse Presents, particularly tonight. Uh, in I'm not I'm gay and not good at math, but in some time it's at seven thirty. You can catch Divine Intervention, where we have an insane episode with three guests and four players, and also me. And uh, things may or may not get bad real fast. We'll see. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah. And thank you, Josh, for, for including me on the sponsorship list. And thank you, all of you. That's it. That's all I got. I'm going to fucking kill that guy. The end. Do it. Mm -hmm. Sefi, you want to take us home? To, yeah. Hi, I'm Sefi, a.k.a. Persephone, who is basically just setting up so that, uh, one, stone grabbing can happen, and two, Virgil can punch this guy. Uh, I assume that after that, Salacia will murder. But, like, I was just, that's just what I was thinking. I was like, if it's blind, these two can move. Anyway, hi, uh, you can find me at Persephiroth everywhere online. Uh, if there's a Persephiroth, it's probably me, unless they're doing terrible, awful things, then it's probably Ben Shapiro trolling my account um, uh, because my life goal is to make sure that he views me directly as an enemy. Uh, you can catch me um, every, it's sort of, I just had surgery, so you can catch me streaming on Twitch, um, but like my schedule is a little right. weird. Right. Yeah, so it's like Wednesdays and Saturdays at this point, like for now, so. Also, check me out on Shakar every Tuesday at that Bronze Girls channel. <coughs> and I am I wasn't done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm done. I assumed. <laughs> and I am everyone's favorite person right now. Your storyteller, Anorian, Josh, whatever the fuck you want to call me. Asshole, bastard. There were several names thrown in there. I don't even think I caught them all. I believe they were mostly colonizer. Yes. Queen killer, you know, no big deal. White devil. Basically. Um, I mean, I'm assuming if you're here, you either already follow me here or you follow me on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash NorianGD, I'm going down with that ship. Like, I don't, I'm not good at other social media, so... When I, I yeah, got, honestly, I, I it's it's really hard because my biggest following is there, and it's really upsetting. It's like, do I have to make videos now? I got like, eleven uh, followers on Instagram. I am screwed six ways from Sunday. I have I'm less going than down half with this of what ship. I have on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, uh, yeah, you know, I, I do this, and then I stream normally outside of this. Uh, this week we've been doing Final Fantasy IV. I'll be playing that through to next week, and then. At the end of next week, I'll be hopping immediately onto Pokemon Violet. Me and someone else here may be in discussions on how we're going to do that, but there will probably be multiple things. We need to do a soul things. link at right. some point. That's going to that. happen. Um, yeah. uh, I've been relaunching my YouTube. I finally got uh, the situation settled with the, on the back end of my handle. By tomorrow, it should be fixed to properly be YouTube.com <gasps> slash Orient. So that'll be ah! awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm and so, so happy. I'm so thank happy. You. And so uh, I'm going to be putting up my, I'm going to be relaunching Let's Play footage along with that. And also I've been getting into reviews and things like that. This Thursday, uh, I did a video that was a preview because Square gave me way early access of Tactics Ogre Reborn. This Thursday, I will have a full unmitigated full thoughts review on the game coming out with like, this is whether or not you should buy it, all that good stuff. Jesus, I spoke a lot. Um, and that's basically it. Here? Right? It's not even a joke. It's just a fact. Um, yeah. So that's basically it on our end. Yeah, and yeah. we are going to take this love elsewhere. Specifically, uh, we are going to go raid Goblin Katie because she is a treasure of a human. Yeah. And we want to bring blessing. support to good people who deserve it. Yep. And they're, and she's a playing spirit fairer, which is adorable. So we're going to go over there. We're going to go hang out. We're going to have some fun. Thank you all so very much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate you all. This episode will be live on YouTube Thursday, along with the rest of the playlist. If you could shout out whenever I'm tweeting for people, like Boost that in the algorithm, it would be appreciated. Support all these other fine people here because they are wonderful. And without them, I would not be telling anywhere near as great of a story. I'm not and wonderful. I'm pure evil. But yes. The four of them are wonderful and one's evil, uh, but they are all still very talented. And good night. Bye.